Hey guys, Jason over here at DIY Ready, and today I'm gonna teach you how to make a real simple adjustable pipe table that will be something perfect for your garage or workspace and with a little bit of extra work, even be something your girlfriend will let you keep in your house. Now there are a number of ways to do this project in terms of height and width of the table that you're gonna want, and you can adjust that as you see fit. But to make the exact table we're making today, you're gonna to need the following. Three two by 12s at six feet in length, three two by fours at 30 inches in length, four threaded one inch diameter pipes at 24 inches in length, four one inch diameter pipes at eight inches in length, four one inch diameter pipes at four inches length, and two one inch diameter pipes at 18 inches in length. You're also gonna need four threaded T connectors, eight floor flanges for your one inch pipes, a box of two and a half inch screws, don't go cheap, get good exterior screws, a Phillips head bit and a 1 8 inch drill bit for your drill. So you will obviously also need a drill. Optionally, if you want to make this table pretty pretty, you're going to need some polyurethane, a stain in your choice of color, and some wood filler. And we'll go through that in a bit. As always, you can go to the write-up of this tutorial for the complete written supply list. So to start, we're going to make the tabletop for our table. So let me clear all this stuff off and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we've got our tabletop laid out. Remember we're using three two by 12s at six feet in length. And again, you can adjust this for whatever size or width that you want. Two by 12s are of course, in fact, about 11 and a half inches wide. So this gives us a surface area of roughly 34 and a half inches to work with. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is lay in three two by fours underneath this table to give it more support. Now, because we have roughly 34 and a half inches of surface area to work with, I cut these two by fours at 30 inches in length. What that means is I'm gonna have a two inch, roughly two and a quarter inch underhang under the table. So you won't see these as readily when you're looking at the table. You can do them flush if you want to, you can do them a little less if you want to, this is just what we decided to do. Okay, so here's our first two by four. What I'm doing is I'm gonna have about a seven inch setback from the edge of the table. So the first thing I do is I measure in seven inches on either side to make sure that the two by four is relatively square on the underside of the table. That gives us a seven inch setback. Then on either side, we're looking for about two and a quarter inches on either side. So I'm setting the ends at two and a quarter inches on either side to give us a nice tight space to work with. If you have a second helper or you have clamps, it's always a good thing, but you can make it work without either. First thing I wanna do is put in my pilot holes for the ends of this two by four. The reason I'm doing that is because if you drill into a two by four or any piece of wood close to the ends without drilling a pilot hole, it's likely to split unless you're using special self-tapping screws. So this is not fine art, and you can be as methodical with this as you want to. What I basically did is put in pilot screws so that I'm gonna eventually have screws, four of them, in each of my two by 12s. So I have four pilot screws here, four here, and four here. That way I can really affix this guy down onto each of the three of the tabletop pieces that I'm gonna be tying down. Once your pilot holes are in place, you can start putting your screws down. Swap out your eighth inch drill bit and throw on your Phillips head bit for your drill. I like to hand tighten these first just so they're in place. Again, you can do this however you see fit. The more work you do with wood, the more special tools you're gonna come up with and the more tricks you're gonna have that are apropos for your own personal style. Start at one end and affix the screw all the way down. I like to check my numbers as I go. I know this one is set well, so I'm gonna set the other side. Make sure I've got my two inch mark. Make sure I've got my seven inch setback, so we're square. Right there. Once these two points are set, you can throw the rest of them down really quickly because this is not gonna move. All right, we got our first support in. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and then we're gonna put one dead in the middle. So now that we flip this table around, I've noticed one thing. We have a fairly big bow on the table and that's one of the results you're gonna find when you're using with cheap wood like Douglas fir. These boards were six bucks a piece, right? So we gotta make do with what we got. One easy way to adjust for this, if you're by yourself, is a clamp. My garage is full of these things. I love clamps. I sleep with them. I dream about them. 
that are in my head all the time. Throw them down on either end of the board. And tighten until you see that bow go away. Once that bow is gone, you're going to be affixing this 2x4 down, and it's going to hold it in place where you want it to be. Now we have nice clean lines running beneath this thing. Do the same thing you did with the other rail, and we're set. So now our two outer supports are done. Last thing to do is throw one dead in the middle. The distance between these two outer supports is roughly 51 inches. Again, we're not going for an exact science here. You can be as anal about it as you want to. <laughs> anal. All right, find your middle mark, throw your middle two by four on that. We got about 51 and 5 eighths, all right? So you figure middle mark's gonna be around, what's that, 25 and 3 quarters, somewhere in there. So take your last two by four, measure out from either one. We'll make it 24 and a quarter to be easy. 24 and a quarter, 24 and a quarter. That's where our last rail's gonna go. We'll throw him down then we're ready to put on our pipes. All right, tabletop's all good to go. Next thing we gotta do is get our pipes together. Grab one of the 24 inch metal pipes and one of your T connectors and screw them on. All you gotta do is hand tighten. Don't need this to be too tight. On top of this bad boy, take your eight inch pipe and screw it in. Then grab your two flanges Screw them down on either end. Try and be more graceful about it than I am. Again, you're just hand tightening. You don't gotta crank the heck out of these things. You end up with something that looks like that. Make two of those to start. All right, now we got our two initial table legs. The next thing we want to do is throw a cross brace in between them for added stability. That's what that 18 inch piece is for. Uh, this is where things get a little bit tricky uh, if you're by yourself, but it's still pretty easy to do. Grab one, stand it up, screw in the 18 inch piece. Now, if you have a helper, this is a good place to grab them. If not, grab the other piece, and you're going to turn the other leg, not this one, you're going to turn the other leg as you tighten it down. So line it up, and rotate it through. I feel like I'm in Cirque du Soleil right now. All right. There's your first set. Notice the H, all right? This brace is going to be closer to the floor because we already have stability up here. So your leg is going to sit just like this on this rail. The other one's going to go down there. So now what we got to do is affix one side of the table with the legs. We'll do that right now. And what you want to do first is center the leg on your rail, right? So we're going to measure on either side to find our center. We got about three inches of space on this side. And if you can see over here, we got about three inches on that side. So we're pretty darn close. You can be as detailed on this as you want. I'm good with what this is now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna affix one end to the two by four. You're gonna have a little bit of overhang on these flanges, don't sweat it. And one trick you can do is drill in at a slight angle with your drill bit uh, to avoid any splitting of the wood on the, on the ends. So I'll just come in at a very slight angle. Throw in my pilot holes. Go back in with my screws. Cool. Now we do the same thing over there. Once that's up, you just do the exact same thing on the other end. One trick you can do with these to make sure these are totally straight is to use spacers. Spacers are gonna come in handy in a lot of woodworking applications, and I'll show you how. We know that this distance, if you measure it, is about 18 and 5 eighths. So what I did, is I cut a scrap of 2x4 to 18 and 5 eighths. Once this side, is, or either side really, is mounted, 
I can put it down by the bottom above the flanges, so you're hitting just the pipes. Put it down by the bottom, and I know that this guy has got to touch him to be at the same distance up here. So I can just hold him in and know that we're straight. And that's it, your legs are on. Now one cool thing about using these different size pipes is that if you need to lower the table, like for example, you're gonna use it uh, one day and then maybe your son or your wife can use it another day, maybe your wife's shorter or taller than you, I don't know, I don't judge. You can pull these off and throw on the shorty with the flange. Do that all around and you just brought your table down four inches. And obviously you can adjust this with, with whatever size pipe that you're gonna get. Flip it over, you got yourself a pretty nice work table. Next thing you wanna do is make the adjustments so that it's nice and level. You can see here that the floor we're on is a little bit wobbly so the table is not sitting perfectly pretty. So we're gonna go down below, we're gonna adjust the pipes until it hits the floor. So we notice here where we got some spacer. All you gotta do is take your pipe, loosen it a little bit, until it sits nice and tight on the floor. Obviously you've got limited play here, so if you have to go down three inches or whatever, you probably want to find a better surface to put it on. But you've got about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of variability with the threads on these pipes. Walk our way through. That one feels pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Stable's a rock. All right, we've got our table outside in the main part of the studio. You want to always stain and sand in a ventilated area. You don't want to get stuff everywhere if you can avoid it. Um, you have a couple options with sanding. One is traditional hand sanding. This is called the sanding sponge. You can get this in a variety of grits. Um, this is a 80, I believe. It's a pretty heavy grit. Um, you can also do a mouse sander. These are fairly inexpensive at the hardware store. If you're only doing a limited amount of sanding, this is a fine tool to have. Or you can upgrade to a belt sander. Big fatty, three by 21 inch uh, sanding belt. This will take care of this thing in no time. You always wanna wear a mask when you're sanding. I know some of the guys out there are gonna say that I'm a, I'm a weakling for saying that, but you don't wanna be breathing this stuff in because it can get pretty toxic. So I'm gonna throw on my mask and we're gonna sand this buddy up. All right, when sanding something like this, you don't have to be Michelangelo. Just make sure you're always sanding in the direction of the grain. Otherwise, you're gonna get big T marks throughout your wood. Um, it's not a exact science. You don't gotta be an artist. Just take it slow. Um, watch your edges. If you wanna round your edges off, you can with a little bit. Just hit, hit it with the belt sander or the palm sander this way or by hand, whatever you wanna do. Um, next step up is we're gonna stain this bad boy. Make sure you clean off all the dust before you stain it, otherwise that dust will get locked in with the stain. So we're gonna wipe this down real quick, throw some stain on it. Another way you can clean this off, so long as maybe your wife, your neighbors, your spouse aren't around. <clears throat> Electric blower's coming real handy. All right. Next up, time to make this thing pretty. We're using a basic Minwax wood finish for this. You can use pretty much any stain you want, so long as it's rated for wood. Some stains are for concrete and other materials, so make sure you got a good wood stain. Don't skimp on the stain, all right? Spend eight bucks on, the, on a thing of stain. Don't get the 75 cent stain at the dollar store. It's gonna come off in a couple weeks. So spend the money, you can afford it, it's okay. Uh, you want this thing to be pretty, right? Uh, with stain, uh, some stains have specific things you need to do in terms of application, but for the most part, they're all very similar. Read your, read your instructions if, you, if they came with the, with the can. Um, the way I always do it, obviously, wear some gloves. Uh, you don't need a fancy brush. 75 cent brush from the store is going to be just fine. Uh, you're not going to be doing uh, detailed work with this on this big table, so a cheap brush is fine. If you want to spend the extra money on a stain brush, you can. But I find that this kind of cheap brush and just a dirty rag uh, are all you need. Start off in one corner. And go, again, just like in sanding, go in the direction of the, of the grain, working it in. Work your way down, slow strokes at a time. And what you can do is you can go back over it with the rag. That'll smooth it out. You can make it lighter, 
you can go in deeper, you can do another coat if you want. If you're going to do more than one coat, just make sure that the stain says you can do more than one. Some stains have to dry considerably before you put another coat on. So again, make sure you read your instructions. The other reason why it's good to have a rag is when you're staining, you're going to get pools up of stain. You're going to have drips come down off the side, uh, maybe pull up and do a little crevasse inside the wood. Hit that with the rag before it dries and then you won't get puddle marks when it dries out. So you'll see I'm hitting on the side here um, and as I'm hitting, the stain is cascading down on the side. So you'll see, for example, right here, if I hit this on the side, it'll start to pull up. What you can do to avoid any pock marks or any strange little puddles showing up, just get it pretty good, same thing, hit it with the rag. Dab it in, hit it with the rag. That'll give you a nice clean line. Wood's always going to be a little different and different parts of the wood are going to absorb differently. So just having that rag handy is going to give you that nice even stain job. When you're working in the seams, all you got to do is just kind of get your brush in there and dab it in. Let it drop down, work it in there. Come back over with your rag. Clean it up. The rag pretty much takes care of everything in terms of pooling and marks and all that stuff. So don't be afraid to use your rag. Just don't use a nice rag. All right, we're all set. Top is stained up nice and pretty. If you want, you can do underneath. I'm not gonna bother today because nobody's ever gonna see it. You wanna go that route, you can. But let me give you a look at what this thing looks like right now. All right, stained up, easy peasy. Took about five minutes to throw this on. It looks fantastic. Uh, again, this is just your basic Douglas fir from the lumber yard. It's very cheap. I think these three boards were about it's about $9 or $10 total for the whole wood system. Optionally, you can also put, do a wood patch in the seams if you want to. Uh, you can lay it in the seams, lay it in any little cracks if you want to do that. Uh, that is obviously sort of the end of the spectrum of the, of the fancy side of things. But if you're interested in doing that, we have that on the written version of this tutorial, which you can find on the site. Hope you enjoyed this. Come on back to DIY Ready for tons of other great projects and things you can do on your own. We'll see you again real soon. We're going to make a lamp out of reclaimed pallet wood from a pallet. And this is what it's going to look like in the end. 